Hi, it's Sola from the BA Test Kitchen, and we're here today to have a secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we're going to be putting his super taster abilities to the test. This is Leah Chase's Creole Gumbo. We're challenging Chris to replicate this dish with every ingredient in just two days. He'll be able to taste it, touch it, smell it, but at no point will he be able to look at the dish. At the end of the second day, I'll come back, taste his final creation, and then I will be the judge. Oh, that's, that's the apron. It's cool, I was like, what kind of tentacle is that? So I'm definitely getting kind of seafood kind of aroma. Ugh. Okay, so we have kind of like the whole sort of like left wing, if you will, of a crab body. Really interesting kind of spicy undertones. So we've got shrimp. We have like a coin of a pork sausage. This is also kind of furthering my belief that this could be gumbo or jambalaya. We have a lot of flavor being washed out of it from having been cooked in this working title stewy situation. So it's stripped out a little bit of like the spice and nuance. It seems like maybe it's like got a little bit of like kind of smokiness to it. A little hard to say. I feel like the traditional sausage in a dish like this would be um, andouille sausage. Whoa. There's something about the texture of this. It's like not just like standard meat, it's like organ, like sweet bread. It's like no f clue what that was. The texture was like meaty, nay, bacony, kind of dried out, but like really almost no flavor of its own. I don't know, that, that freaked me out a little bit. Whoa. Slippery little suckers, huh? Oh, I hate that taste. Where the trash? Oh, tasted like a flaccid little tough nugget of liver. I hate that. Shit. Shrimp, great, big whoop. So now I seem to have a pocket of braised meat, which I'm tentatively calling pork shoulder. So now we have like another sausage. Oh my God, you guys. So this one actually has like quite a bit of pepperiness, quite a bit of bite to it. So we need like a, a kind of like a one inch, very spice forward sausage. So the other one was like a little bit milder, like a mild andouille, like a kielbasa, something like that. We also need like a very peppery, kind of like cayenne forward smaller sausage. Is that a f chicken neck? I have no frame of reference for what this is. I know it's so supple and so tender though. Sola, you back there? What do you know about a pigtail? A lot of cartilage and fat and a lot of little bone. A lot of fat, right? Yes but it should be like chewy. Okay, at first I was like, oh, is this like a chicken neck? But these feel like too big to be uh -uh. a chicken neck. These are like burly, right? I, yeah, I don't. Okay. This little number, this seat feels like, it almost feels like I haven't had I'm it. Not there anymore. Here we have like another bony something with like a fatty rich something all around it. Um. Oh, <laughs> Chicken wing. Sorry, I'm back. So now I'm getting down to where there is lots of texture. I don't know, that's freaking me out. That feels like just like some like a, like a lump of like fat. 
this and this. Same thing. I'll give you one. We'll do it together. How about that? Okay. Sure. One, two, three, down the hatch. What does it taste like? It doesn't taste like anything. Does it taste briny? Oh, oh you guys. No, oyster. This one's a workout. So now I'm just taking a bite of the thing. So the flavor is actually a little bit more understated than maybe I was like initially led to believe. I am getting like all the flavors of the meats kind of coming into it. I'd say there's probably like onion and garlic, some green pepper maybe. It's spicy in like a Creole seasoning way. You know, there's like a little pop of like dried red chili heat, a lot of pepper, salt. Could this be another roux situation? I feel like from past experience, you know, jambalaya or gumbo is thickened with filet powder. It's like ground sassafras leaves, which is kind of like a thickening agent, but without being like crazy bound. And the rice is obviously kind of hydrating as this cooks. So I'm gonna lean on like no roux, but like maybe a thickening agent of some kind. I would call this jambalaya and say maybe emerald. All right, I think I'm done here. I need, I'm ready to take the blindfold off, ready to live my life. In terms of our shopping list, proteins. We've got crab, something medium size, shrimp, two pork sausages. Pretty sure that was liver because I had such a violent reaction to it. Sweet bread or kidney, I don't know. Maybe we'll pick up both, F it. We're looking at a pigtail, wing flats, and then oyster. <laughs> what happened? No, I got locked out of my house. What? Yeah, he almost had to climb through the window. I have an emergency. Don't say it. Cut this part. <laughs> I just ate so much organ meat and like slippery organ seafood meat? bits and like different meats. What are you meats. doing, bud? What is it's this? It's like shit? barnyard and like a, a tide pool in one dish. Pigtails? I've never had a pigtail. What or maybe, or have I? It was some part of a animal. It was like tender, Crunch. fatty, rich. Well, I didn't like bite the bone. Was it rice? There was rice in there. Was it real loose? It was like thick. It was tight. It was tight. Was there chicken in it too? Yeah, those wings. Shrimp? Wings? This ain't jambalaya. This is somebody's jambalaya. This is some goulash. This is Kidneys like a rodeo in your bowl. This is wild. I think it's something someone just riffed on all of this and made a, a, a Cajun goulash. <laughs> this is fun. All right, I'll, uh, I'll All move right. the on. I got to I yeah, okay. back to work. All right. This is exciting. All right. Real quick cuz I have to go. Onion, garlic, maybe like a dried chili paprika kind of situation. Filet with the accent. Rice. Cool. So, I'm going to grab my list, head to the supermarket and see what I can find there. I'm just getting at least one green pepper option. I'm gonna get a couple safety chilies. So we're gonna get some garlic and onion spices. We've got hot paprika and sweet paprika. I feel like filet powder would definitely be in the spice section, but I could be wrong. If only it were that easy. Emerald essence. We gotta get this. Let's check out sausages. All right, so I'm getting andouille here. Wings, chicken liver. By far my least favorite thing about the dish. So we're gonna need some seafood. Hi, how you doing? Could I have a half pound of the wild shrimp, please? And could I also have four oysters? That actually takes care of most of our proteins aside from a pigtail and possibly sweetbreads or other weirdly textured organ meat. Uh, I'm also gonna get some whole peeled, just a couple small cans of whole peeled tomatoes that I'll puree myself. Also, while we're over here, let's check out rice. I think, honestly, what we want is just basic AF long grain white rice. That's it. I think that's it. We're done.
All right, we just got back from the supermarket. I've been trying to organize my thoughts as to what sequence all of these ingredients need to be put into a pot. I'm under a lot of time pressure here. I iced myself down a fun beverage. Mmm. So I'm just gonna make this a Frito. Sofrito is just like your aromatic base of vegetables. Usually some combination of onion, garlic, pepper, could be celery, carrot, depending on what you're making. I'm gonna go for a combination of green bell pepper and then jalapeno that I'm gonna seed. I'm just gonna pulse up the base for my sofrito. I just want it to be super fine and I wanna cook it out until it's like kind of pasty. I want this sofrito to end up as closer to a paste. And this is gonna take a little while to cook out, so I just wanna have it going on the side. In a separate pot over here, I'm gonna start browning off some of that meat, develop a little bit of a fond that we can then kind of deglaze. It's gonna be great, don't worry. So I've got pigtail, chicken neck, and sweetbreads from veal. So the supermarket didn't have these ingredients. I asked for them and our intrepid culinary team went out and sourced them on very short notice. Or they just had them in the back and they're totally with me. I'll never know. This is like nice smoky, you know, hopefully fairly peppery and dewy sausage. And then this is a kielbasa, also a smoked sausage. Um, but this is a combination of beef and pork. I just want the flat of the wing, chicken neck. Let's throw a couple of these in. So it turns out that pigtails are a little bit bigger than I was expecting. What I had in the original dish was not pigtail. This looks like mini oxtails, much more likely looking now. What I tasted and felt was chicken neck. I mean, it does look like a richer, darker meat, you know, and maybe it does get that rich, kind of more shreddy texture that I was experiencing. I don't know, I mean, it's a real kind of mind now. So sausage, I just kind of gave a little bit of color to, and then I'll keep browning this stuff right here. I'm just putting a little of each of these paprikas in. So like, this is the moment where if I wanted to use flour and create, you know, like some kind of roux, would you have a roux and then have filet powder? I mean, it's not like filet powder is something that I can taste. I'm gonna try not doing the flour today. How about that? So that was just a little half can of tomato. Now I wanna cook this out. We're gonna see how this one does today in terms of any changes tomorrow. I'm gonna to start to bring this up with some water. Gonna deglaze like those brown bits on the bottom of the pot and get this cooking. So you can see even just the color of the water as we deglaze these you know, bits, the water's pulling some of the color off of our browned meat. All that is good stuff. And then what I might do right now, put in half. So that kind of gives us something like that. Ooh, hello, buddy. So I've got shrimp. I will be dropping the shrimp right into the stew. I'm shucking an oyster, although I'm not doing a very good job of it. There we go. Just want to keep it intact and in its own liquor. I assume this is a blue crab. They're going to go in our liquid. We're going to cook them off. And Hansi's going to tell me how long. Eight to 10 minutes. Okay. We'll go eight to 10 minutes. So this is our kielbasa, our mixture of beef and pork. Kielbasa? What do you know about jambalaya? It's from New Orleans. Okay. It, it appears that I'm not the right person to be uh, consulting here. So Sorry, that's all right. It was a good gut check. Thanks, ma'am. Let's pull these out and let's see where we're at. Crabs are out, rice has got to go in. We're going to get it uh, even somewhat cooked on time. I'm not putting a lot of rice in. So this is chicken liver. I don't have like some big beef with like chicken liver mousse or whatever, but just liver hanging out like a fart in a car. I don't need that. Shrimp just went in. Just want to poach them off in here. Liver's just going in. I'm so short on time. It's like not even funny. All right, we're going to let this go for just a few minutes. All right, cool. Oysters coming in. Just gonna kind of dot them around in there. All right, so this is my first version of the dish. Not bad for first crack. There's a lot of flavor going on in here. 
I think I have most of the elements. I am questioning whether there could be an herb. You know, there's always the possibility of another spice or something. Wondering about the placement of the rice, whether that feels right. I don't hate this actually, but I, maybe I'll have a better sense when uh, I taste the dish again tomorrow morning. Ingredients, I'll give myself an 82. Taste, I, look, I will give myself a solid 85 there. Maybe even an 86. Ooh, this is where I'll put myself at 70. I feel like these things could be added in any kind of order. You could have two pots coming together into one pot. Everything could be dumped in a pot and brought up together, like Doc Bokumtang style. Who knows? Appearance, I'll give myself a 78. I mean, there's crab sticking out of a bowl and there's a whole bunch of in it. I didn't like put up a burger here, you know? I'm just like waiting for that stupid actually score to just pop up there. All right, so that puts me at a 79% or C plus average. This is my first pass, but I've got one more chance to taste the dish tomorrow before I have to make a final version for Sola and I'm a little bit freaked out about it. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so we've got our crab here. I want to just see if I can determine if there might be something on the surface. All right, so I've got an herb here, and I'm going to call that for parsley. Here's like my nug. This is like the nug of doom. That now just tastes like a slightly dry piece of chicken thigh. I guess it's probably not sweet bread. It just doesn't really have like any flavor whatsoever. But if I had to say, you know, maybe I'll do some like boneless, skinless chicken thigh and roll with that. Yeah. So we have our very smoky, spicy andouille. And we had our mild sausage earlier. We've got shrimp. Ah! We've got our chicken neck. So it seems like you guys gave me some drumettes today. Like this actually has flavor. This tastes like a lump of, a you know, hunk of pork shoulder. Wow. And that wing is just like falling apart. I just feel like it's gotta have been cooked in there for a while. I think there is a, a reasonable question to ask in terms of like, was this wing possibly just dropped into the stew, not browned off ahead of time? Same thing with the pork shoulder, I don't know. In terms of how I imagine this dish would be constructed. It still makes sense to me to brown off the meat that kind of wants to be browned off. One thing that tells me that the sausage certainly like spent a decent amount of time in the liquid is see how the skin on the sausage is kind of like cupped like that. It's only gonna do that when it's been sliced and then added to the liquid. That kind of tightens that casing up and makes the sides kind of bulge out like that, giving you that little dip in there. The texture of the rice in here is perfect. I think now that this rice has been cooked on the side, I'm not really anywhere that different from where I was yesterday in terms of flavors. I'm wondering if there's just like some other herb I could be putting kind of in with my sort of chili. There's something about it, the interaction with that kind of broth. Uh, I was thinking dried oregano. I think I'm good. All right, let's maybe make our aromatic base here. Let's get the meat sweating. So I've got boneless pork shoulder. This was not used yesterday, but only because I forgot to use it yesterday. I've decided to go ahead and sear off the meat. The chicken wings, I feel like we could kind of go either way on. Some of the seafood, obviously, you know, you just, it makes sense to drop it in at the very end. So, I just pulled it without thinking about it too hard because I do have a certain amount of affection for this pot, but it's a disc bottom pot. So you have multiple layers of metal only in the center of the bottom. So you get these like stupid hot spots all around the edge. You just don't get very even cooking, not into it. Before I build up too much bond in the pot that's really upsetting me, I just want to transfer, change course. You know, when you feel something is going wrong, Got to do something about it right away. So we're not going crazy trying to get like masses of color on this meat. Just like sweat out some of that fat, develop a little more fawn. 
Uh, so I've got my mild kielbasa, and then I've got my smoky, peppery, andouille sausage. I, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with those like meaty little nugs. I don't know if I'm just making it way more complicated than it needs to be. So I've got my aromatic base. It's gonna pulse it up. So we got our aromatic base in the pot. It's picking up all that fond. I don't wanna rush this. I wanna cook off the water and then I wanna just give like a light brown and super concentration to this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the Holy Trinity refers to onion, garlic, and then pepper, you know, green pepper specifically. I thought it was onion, celery, peppers. Onion, celery, pepper? What's that? Oh, you did? Right. Oh, it's celery? Celery. Well, yeah. Do I need to put some celery in here? Yeah. All right, give me a celery stock. Peppers. Quick, 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 quick. I gotta get it in there. I don't often put celery in my aromatic bases, but it's usually just because I can't be bothered to like have it around at home. All right, celery's now in. So I've got some hot paprika, sweet paprika, good bit of black pepper, oregano. Now that's giving me like zesty. This is a tomato puree. Just going in, I'm gonna cook it out again, real hard. See how concentrated that tomato is? It's almost turned into, you know, kind of paste. That's good, like that tomato is cooked out. We're not gonna have any more of that kind of tinny canned tomato flavor. Cooking out tomato is something that I firmly, firmly firmly believe in. I think at this point we can also add these kind of long cooking meats. I put one chicken thigh in there and I'm gonna see how it behaves. We're gonna let this situation come up to a simmer, turn the heat down, simmer it gently, probably check it in like an hour. All right, so I'm gonna slice some sausage and get it in. Along with our crabs, I wanna go ahead and steam off our little friends there. Today, the rice is being cooked separately. All right, I want a little more heat here. Great. So we are peeling the shrimp, liver, crab. Pretty good. Maybe just a pinch of salt and then liver and shrimp can go in. And then I think we're, we're like basically there. All right, so straight up, um, we have to break with uh, our normal format for the show, which is that normally on the second day, I cook the dish twice. But because this dish takes a little while to cook, I'm just doing one version of the dish today uh, that I have to serve to Sola. So unfortunately, out of time, but uh, those are the breaks, and I think it's gonna be all right. Rice on the bottom. These are oysters that we had shuck this morning. parsley. There you have it. Emerald Lagasse's Insanity Gumbo. How you like them apples? For ingredients, I would give myself an 83. Taste, I'm gonna go with 86. Technique, ooh. Let's call this uh, 84. Appearance, 88. So that averages me out uh, at 85. I don't think I'm gonna get an 85 from Sola. She doesn't even give herself 85s. I'm so curious to find out who the developer of this dish was, what it's called, and how it's actually made, and what the ingredients are. Here we are. Here we are. How do you feel? Okay, let me get into it. So it's just like, <laughs> it's so hard. All right, ready? So, yeah. Chris. Okay. I want to present you with Creole Gumbo by Leia Chase from the Dookie Chase restaurant. Ah. I mean, they look really close. Look at that. Is that ham? That's what the cube was. Oh. That's the cube. How did cube lead you to chicken thigh? It didn't really. Yeah. I, I put like half of a chicken thigh and then saw how it behaved and I don't even want to acknowledge the fact that it's even in there. I thought it was sweet bread. You thought the cube was sweet bread? Yeah, it had like a oh. kind of like an organy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Can I eat it together? A yeah, sure. That does not taste like ham. It does not taste like ham. She just said it does not taste like ham. But like crab, crab, shrimp, shrimp. You got sausage. Leah Chase is the Creole queen. And this is a recipe from the Dookie Chase restaurant. So it is gumbo. It is gumbo. I'm so glad you came back from the jambalaya journey. So we are going to try the original. Okay. And then the crisp version. It's quite a light gumbo, for sure. No roux. No, no, there is a roux. 
off. There's rule in here. Is there filet powder? There's filet powder. This does not have the consistency of something with roux in it at it's, all. Yeah, I feel like it was just there for flavor, for depth. I'm gonna make you a perfect bite of this. Okay, I'm ready. I'm just gonna make you a taste of the broth. I mean, yeah. you're gonna get everything you need from that, right? You don't need to like you sit there and eat the proteins, do you? No. No. It's fine. You're fine. No. This has a lot of body, and I, I was concerned about that. It felt like there was a little too much body from, you know, my aromatic base. Mm -hmm. Is there tomato in there? Oh yeah, I put tomato. Yeah, in. that's I, probably I, where that body, like puree. Like a small amount of puree, just like cooked out hard. Ingredient-wise, it looks like you did pretty good. What sausages? What proteins? What little animal tidbits did you choose? Pork shoulder. Pork shoulder. Okay, I think that was the hardest ingredient, which was actually veal. 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 Who uses veal? I haven't seen veal in years. I was blown oh away God. by it. And then I had an andouille sausage. Nailed it. I had a kielbasa or like a mild, you know, kind of that, blended sausage. The judges will allow it. Then I had chicken neck. Perfect. I had chicken wings. Crushing it. I had crab. You got the crabs. They Whatever. gave you the crabs. Well, they didn't sell them at the supermarket. <laughs> Everyone calm down. Shrimp. Shrimp. Liver. It was gizzards. I, so it was so close though, so close. Did you brown off the liver too and no, put that in? That you not. just put in. That I just slipped in. Okay. Can you tell me about your procedure? I browned off my pork shoulder, wings, chicken neck, built some fond, and then I had an aromatic base on top of that. Paprika, black pepper, oregano. I didn't end up using dried thyme, uh, just oregano. Oh, so close with that thyme, so close. Was there thyme in there? It was thyme. Almost. And then a little bit of tomato puree on top of that. And then I used water just because water. Your order of operations were not correct. Mm. Nothing's brown. Yeah. Okay. All the brown flavor comes from the, the, the medium brown roux. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. The way that this Creole gumbo is made. So you start by putting the crab, the sausage, veal, gizzard, all in a pot with no oil. And then meanwhile, in another skillet, you'll make your roux. There's no aromatic base. Once you get your roux right, nice and dark, the onion goes in there, okay. sweat down. And then that onion roux situation gets poured on top of your steamed crab and sausage deal. You slowly add water, stirring the whole uh -huh. time so the roux dissolves. Uh -huh. And then you throw in all of your proteins. Wow. Everything just goes in there. And then the oysters go in for the last bit just to like warm through. Okay. And is there paprika in there? Hot paprika. Okay. All right. There's I got that. hot paprika in here. So you got that. I mean, That's I would have never done it this way. Never. Never. It would have never occurred to me to make it this never. way. Never. So it's time for the scores. Okay. Your favorite part. Yeah. Even though I feel like the veal for pork, like whatever. That's like, that was an impossible one. We'll, we'll let that slide. The weird cubes. Those cubes don't taste like anything. Thank you. Who cares? I appreciate that. Who cares what those turned out to be? I appreciate that. But then maybe like the bigger errors was the addition of stuff. Sure. So how do you feel about a solid low B? Yeah. Like I mean, an 82%. Great. All right. <laughs> yeah, do you feel yeah, like good? Yeah, sure. I know, it took me a long time to have you no, like that. No, it's okay. Taste is great. I mean. If you closed your eyes and took, I mean like tomato notwithstanding, Take a take a flavor, a little a little tasty taste of that. Uh-huh. Ninety-five percent. Taste <laughs> Boom. <laughs> taste is great. Technique. Oh. Oh. Technique. Technique, this oh, is where God. it all comes crashing it's down. It's okay. I mean I can take it. Sixty-five percent. The technique was way, way off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appearance, besides the tomato, and like there's some more body here, they pretty much look the same. How do you feel about it? Like 87%. Yep, that's A high fine. B. So that tabulates to 82%. Oh my God, okay. Well, that's, that's a like B. way that's a more respectable B. than I would have thought. Right? This one was really tricky, and it was tricky. You know, they're all tricky, but like this was like so unexpected. Thanks. Hey, thank you, seriously. Appreciate it. Thank you, seriously. All right. Every day. All right. <laughs> this, I no real closing thoughts. This was a tough one. I definitely learned something here. Doing the dish the way I did it, there definitely would not have been time to do it all over again, but now I know. What's frustrating to me is that like I keep coming very close with a lot of things, but there's just always something, whether it's an ingredient or a technique, 
that is not uh, immediately uh, and readily apparent and ends up biting me in the ass. And I don't want to get bit in the ass anymore. I feel like we are so far from being uh, done with types of dishes that would be appropriate for this. I feel like there are so many different cuisines, you know, we haven't even touched. And I'm just looking forward to the next challenge. What you got there, female? Flip her over. No, that's a male. We are in uncharted territory here. I'll show you how. Flip it over again. Say, so, well, this one kind of looks like a d <laughs> And that is, a, that's the male. That's it, bud. Little fun fact. Crab Yeah, just so you know. Cool.